Let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Royal Family Everlasting God to deliver to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, Leader Olumba, Olumba, Abu, the Supernatural Teacher. First lesson, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28. Wherefore, we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Second lesson, Romans chapter 4, verses 3 to 4. For what said the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward, not reckoned of grace, but of debt. Golden text, Matthew 20, chapter 20, verse 20. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her son, worshipping him and desiring a certain thing of him. Quote, the children of God are born. Beloved, does man think that the kingdom of God is acquired through violence? Does he also think that the kingdom of God is a strange land which only great people can acquire? Or does he believe that God has no family? No. Let it be known that God has a family. <coughs> the title, Royal which the worldly kings, queens, and queens now claim for their families is derived from God's royal family, the only true royal family. If someone gives you a vision that you will backslide from this <coughs> fold, do not bother yourself, for whatever was written about you must stand. Nothing can take it away. If you are of God's family, no one can take your position. All things are given to man from above, not according to his good works, righteousness, wisdom, and or power. You are not blessed because of your beauty, academic or spiritual attainment. Recall what our Lord Jesus Christ told the mother of the two sons of Zebedee. He told her that her two sons might drink of his cup and undergo his type of baptism, but to sit with him on his right hand and on his left hand in his father's kingdom is not his decision to make, but a prerogative of his father, because those to be there were already predestined by his father. Matthew chapter 20 verse 21. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her two sons, worshipping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he told her, What wilt thou? She said unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on the right hand and the other on the left, in thy kingdom stop struggling and hustling for possessions and position in the kingdom of god for god as a royal for god as a family every person is destined for one thing or the other but be it wealth or wrong you are not elected into any post because you can speak the English language fluently or that you know how to play the game of politics. Those who are the family of God are born naturally as God's children. The children of God are the family of God who are not made but born. And they are not introduced through vision, prophecy or Voting, you may be a great visioner, yet you may not be called to man any place. If you are not of the family of God, you cannot be given a position in this kingdom. No matter your wisdom, wealth, or power, 
If you know that you are not of God's kingdom, do not worry yourself, but be contented with the position you are kept. Now, take a look at the position of the Queen of England. Does it mean that there are no other women more educated, beautiful, or even taller than her in England? Were there no men to man such a position? The queen inherited her position from her family. Therefore, the position of the queen of England is hereditary. No matter how wealthy, educated, or beautiful you may be, you cannot be appointed to that post unless you are of that family. In the same way, God has his family. This explains why he often declares at the end of each gospel that those who are here should hear. Those who have the ears to hear are the children of God, and only the people of God's family hear and understand his word. He that is of God heareth God's word. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. John 8 verse 47 All the instructions of God are for his children. God is particularly concerned about his family, hence, you have to consolidate your position. Do not allow any person to deceive you with carnal ideas. Do not accept what people tell you that if you do one thing or the other, God will place you in a certain position. This kingdom is not a quick acquired through works, but by destiny. God has predestined all things before the foundations of the world were laid. Now, you are not expected to worry about having faith in him, for he is the giver and controller of faith. If, if he wants you to believe in him, he gives you the ability. Everything has already been arranged. No one in the entire world has this idea. Else, why should mankind not understand God or believe in him? Why should man say that a man could not be God? You do not know what or who God is, which explains the reason why you do not know whether he is, whether he has a family or not. You do not know what, who or how the Almighty God is. The problem between the Muslims and the Christians emanates from this spiritual Ignorance. The Muslim claims to be the real descendants of Abraham and the true worshippers of God. Their claim to be the heirs of Abraham stem from the birth of Ishmael. They are, they are contending that since Abraham slept with Hagar, his wife's maid, and she gave birth to Ishmael, that Ishmael is the first son of Abraham. This by natural law of birth and heritage is correct. However, the spiritual law supersedes that of the flesh. Now, Abraham and Sarah, his wife, were spiritually of the same parenthood. They are of the same father, God, and therefore of God's family. So, the promise of God to Abraham about his family was to be fulfilled through the birth of Isaac by Sarah, who spiritually was of the same family. Hagar was from Egypt and could not have been from that family of God. If she was not of the family of God, how then could her son or daughter become a child of God? Do you think that was Abraham's only child? There were others, yet they were not recorded because they were not of God's family. Those were children he begot from concubines. In this case of Isaac, Sarah is his mother, and Abram, his father, were of the same father, but different mothers. So he, Isaac, was the child of promise for them. Those who go about struggling for things here and there should be warned that such unbecoming attitude does not fetch one any good here. 
the origin of the engagement ring. You may establish a hundred churches, several prayer houses or healing homes, but what is not for you cannot be given to you. That was why when Abraham was about to sleep in the Lord, he ordered his slaves to go to his hometown and bring a wife from there for his son Isaac. He warned them never to take any woman from any strange land for his son Isaac. That was to say that they should not take any woman from another tribe but his own tribe and family. Abraham's servants conferred with their master their problem which included their inability to trace his hometown. This was because of the fact that Abram had left his hometown for over 40 years and had not visited since then. However, Abram told them that the angel of the Lord would lead them. Abram's servants were led to Abram's hometown, in fact, his family. When they got there, they first met the destined wife of Isaac, Rebecca, at a well and demanded for her and demanded for water to drink and for their cattle she obliged them after drinking they discovered that it was it was late in the evening and they needed a place to pass the night this they made known to rebecca and she invited them to her family house, to her family house, where they met her parents. Because of Rebecca's hospitality, Abraham's servants picked interest in her, and in the course of introducing themselves to one another, Abraham's servants realized that Rebecca was Isaac's first cousin, as her father was. Abraham's brother, this they quickly revealed their mission to them. They accepted the proposal which was concretized by the engagement ring which Abraham gave them. This is the origin of the engagement ring and the following day the servants left with Rebecca as Isaac's why? It was not an accidental marriage, but God's predestined affair. Read Genesis 24, verses 1 to 51. And, and Abram was told, and Abram was old, and well stricken in years. And the Lord had blessed Abram in all things. And Abram said unto his eldest servant of his house, that ruled over all that he had. Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I now dwell, but thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son Isaac. And the servant said unto him, Peradventure, the woman will not be willing to follow me unto, the, unto this land. Must I needs bring thy son again unto the land from whence thou camest? And Abram said unto him, Beware that, beware thou, that thou bring not my son thither again, the Lord God of heaven, which, look, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred and which spake unto me and that swear unto me saying unto thy seed will I give this land he shall send his angel before thee and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence and if the woman will not willing to follow thee then thou shalt be clear from this thine my hope only bring not my son thither again and the servant put his hand under the tie of Abraham his master and swear to him concerning this matter. And 
the servant took ten camels and the camels of his master and departed. For all the goods of his master were in his hand, and he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor, and he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. And he said, O Lord, God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day, and show kindness unto thy master Abraham. Behold, I, st I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of all of the men of the city come out to draw water, and let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, Let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink, and she shall say, Drink, and I will give thy camel drink also. Let the same be she thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou art showed kindness unto my master. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold Rebekah came out who was born of Bethuel, son of Milka, the wife of Naor, Abram's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder, and the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin, neither had any man known her, and she went down to the well, and filled her pitcher, and came up, and the servant ran to meet her, and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, Drink, my lord. And she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again unto the well to draw water and drew for all his camel and the man wondering at her held his peace to wit whether the lord had made his journey prosperous or not and it came to pass as the camel had done drinking that the man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight and two bracelets for her hands and ten shekels weight of gold and said whose daughter art thou tell me i pray thee is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in and she said unto him i am the daughter of bethuel the son of milka which she bore unto nahor she said moreover unto him we have both straw and provender enough and room to lodge in. And the man bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who art not left me or destitute, my master of his mercy and his truth. I bring I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. And the damsel ran and told them of her mother's house these things. And Rebekah had a brother, and his name was Laban. And Laban ran out unto the man, unto the well. And it came to pass, when he saw the earring and bracelet upon his sister's hand, and when he heard of of when he heard the words of Rebecca, his sister, saying, Thus spake the man unto me, that he came unto the man, and behold, he stood by the camels at the well, and he said, 
Come in, thou blessed of the Lord. Wherefore standest thou without? For I have prepared the house and room for the camel. And the man came into the house, and he ungirded his camel, and gave straw and provender for the camel, and water to wash his feet, and the men's feet were and the men's feet that were with him. And there was set meat before him to eat, but he said, I will not eat until I have told mine errand. And he said, Speak on. And he said, I am Abram's servant, and the Lord had blessed my master greatly, and he become great, and he had given him flocks and herds of silver and gold and men servants and maid servants and camels and asses and Sarah my master's wife bear a son to my master when she was old and unto him had he given all that he had and my master made us me swear saying thou shalt not take a wife of my son of the daughters of the Canaanite in whose land I dwell but thou shalt go unto my father's house and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son and I said unto my master peradventure the woman will not follow me and he said unto me the Lord before whom I walk will send his angel with thee and prosper thy way and thou shalt take a wife for my son of the kindred of my father's house, then shalt thou be clear from this my hope, when thou comest to my kindred, and if they give not thee one, thou shalt be clear from my hope. And I came this day unto the well and said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, if now thou do prosper, my way which I go, behold, I stand by the well of water, and it shall come to pass that when the virgin cometh forth to draw water, and I say unto her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water of thy pitcher to drink. And she said to me, Both drink thou, and I will also draw for thy camel. Let the same be the woman whom the Lord hath appointed out for my master's son. And before I had done speaking in my heart, behold, Rebekah came forth with her pitcher on her shoulder, and she went down unto the well and draw water. And I said unto her, Let me drink, I pray thee. And she made haste and let down her pitcher from her shoulder and said, Drink, I, and I will give thy camels also to drink. So I drank, and she made the camel drink also. And I asked her and said, Whose daughter art thou? And she said, The daughter of Bethuel, nay, her son, whom Micah bare unto him. And I put my earring upon her, upon her face, and the bracelet upon her hand, and I bowed down my head and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my brother to take my my master's brother's daughter unto his son. And now, if ye will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, that I may turn to the right hand or the left hand.